welcome back to our shop just outside Kennesaw here in North Georgia. Well today's project is to prepare this depression era, I guess it's an occasional table, for sale. Come on in, take a look, let's see what's wrong with it. Here's the top. You can see somebody sure like to put wet drinks up on this finish. This is a mahogany top. I, I don't believe it's solid. I believe it's a veneer on the top, a veneer on the bottom with an applied molding in between. And if you can see, if I shake this a little bit, you see it's got a bit of a case with the wiggles. So when we get this apart, I want to see how this is put together and see if we can eliminate some of that. This is really the main problem with this piece. The base is in fairly good shape. The finish is worn, but I think if we just clean it, maybe shoot a coat of shellac on it, that'll pretty it up. There's probably a little bit of color work down there as well. Let me flip this over and let's take a look at the underside. Here's the label. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to read it, but it does say Indiana, USA, Crawford, Indiana, maybe Humphrey Furniture Company. A big old screw hole right through the label. Yeah, nothing earth shattering with the uh, with the legs taken off. It doesn't look like it's it's had a different set of legs on it ever. All right, let's look at the base. Well, the screws that uh, hold the, the bottom leg assembly, the cross, to the uh, decorative cornices were all tight. This main lag bolt that holds it all together to the upright, it runs through and holds these legs to this portion of this turning. That was stripped out and uh, we have to fix that. So what I'm going to do is uh, get a dowel, glue that dowel, pound the dowel in and we'll re-drill and uh, remount this lag screw square headed back into here. That's next. Now just like anything else there's a number of ways you can fix this. I could stuff a piece of a veneer in there and try to get that tightened up because right now what we have is we have probably a, a half inch hole that goes in that far and then it tapers in. But what I've chosen to do is I'm going to drill this all out, put a half inch dowel on there with glue, and then we'll re-drill this hole so we're certain that this bolt gets a good purchase because this really is a big part of the structural support of that upper piece and we don't want that to be compromised. So I've taken my drill bit, I've measured how deep I want to drill, and now we're going to drill. Just like that. We've got a half inch dowel that we'll pound in there with some glue as soon as I blow that out from some chips. I hope you could, hear, you could hear the tone change when that bottomed out. And I just tapped that in with this uh, wooden mallet. Okay, let's cut that flush. Not my best cut, 
had some contact over here, which is not, ain't the end of the world, but we try to do better than that. Okay, that's completely plugged. So once that glue sets up, we'll re-drill and re-thread this in there and we'll be all set. Let's move on to gluing up the loose dowel joints at the top. And right here on all four of these is the source of that wiggle that we were dealing with. And there we go. They need to be re-glued. Got them all out and I didn't break anything. That's a good start. Okay, all these dowels appear nice and tight. The one that popped out is nice and tight in its piece of trim. So the next step is to scrape all this old glue off. We'll re-glue these, clamp it up, and the repairs to this base will be done. There's really not a lot of uh, special skill involved here. Just get off as much of this glue as we can. When it comes time to take the glue out of, clean the glue, out of these holes, what, I, what you can do is, this is a, a drill bit that matches the hole. I think it's 5 sixteenths. I'd have to take another look. But anyways, regardless, just take it and and fit it in the hole and then with your hands just spin it and all you're doing really is just scraping the sides of that hole clean of any glue or goo that might be in there. You can also a quarter inch chisel and, and run it in there but this, this little tip with the drill bit tends to work. I would definitely not attach this. I would definitely not attach this to a power drill. You're not, your goal is not to waddle this hole out or change its depth. It's merely to scrape any dried glue off the sides of the hole. For what it's worth. Oh, by the way, it's a 3 8 Okay, it's all test fit. It's all clean. It's all back together. Let's glue it up. And I did spend some time working out a clamping plan that I think is going to work, so we'll see. The dowels that are on here are spiral fluted, so I don't have to worry about air locking the glue. I don't have to dig any uh, grooves in them. Those spiral flutes are designed to let the air out, so that's not going to be a problem. And of course, right as I start the glue up, Stuart decides he wants to go outside. So. Okay, there we go. I got three more to glue up and I'll bring you back for the clamping. And I'm just taking a damp rag, a little old flat braided scraper to get in there and take care of some of this glue squeeze out. It's going to be tough to get in here once the clamps are on and I know it's going to squeeze out once the clamps go on, but let's try to get as much of this off as we can before we make more work for ourselves, although we are going to have to revisit glue squeeze out here.
Well, there we go. I think that's going to do just fine. So that's all glued up. That's got to dry. And then remember, down at the bottom, we've run that dowel through there. We're going to have to drill and uh, re-bolt that bottom down. But I think we're just going to let this part of the project be for the rest of the day. Let the glue set up. And then we'll come over and start on the top. Okay, here's the underside of the table. And uh, as you know, I've got a thing about stripper drips getting on the underside. So I put some tape on it. We're not going to do anything at all with the underside of the table. What we are going to do is remove all this finish. And the way I'm going to do it is with stripper like I normally do. And I'll show you real quick how I'm going to do it and then I'm going to get to it. And of course, the real challenge is always these, this little molding here, but we'll get through it. So give me a chance to get my stuff together and we'll get stripping this. Okay, real quickly before I turn off the camera, and if you're going to use chemical stripper, please follow the directions. But I just apply the stripper, and you have to excuse me, both dogs are in here because the, the county tax assessor is outside looking at the house, and the dogs don't much care for that. You just want to keep the area that you're stripping you know, reasonable so you don't get uh, ahead of yourself and try to keep it wet. There's really not much finish on this table. Yeah, there's, there's hardly any finish on this surface at all, but you can see it's just coming right up. What little finish is on here. Alright, I'll have this top stripped in no time at all. Then I'm going to show you how we're going to work this, uh, this molding to get it cleaned up. I'm just taking some 4 op steel wool with a little bit of the stripper on it. Just getting the last of what might be here. And the next thing we have to deal with is this little groove here. And that's really just a matter of getting a brush or a screwdriver or something in there to knock out the liquefied finish from the stripper. This, this brush is brass, so it's soft. Okay, let's deal with the, uh, with the moldings. They've had, some, uh, they've had some stripper applied to them. What I'm going to do is just reapply some stripper with some 4 aught steel wool. And again, since this finish is so thin on this piece, really not going to be too difficult to get this off and then between the steel wool and your brush you should be able to get any residual finish off of there Okay, the stripper's all been removed. The next step is to scrub it down with a little bit of lacquer thinner. That'll get the remaining any remaining finish off. You can also hopefully you can also see that those water rings are still present. I was kind of hoping that they might disappear, but no such luck. So we're gonna have to deal with those shortly. Another safety note: follow the directions on the can. As far as ventilation, open flames, all that stuff. Then we'll do the same thing for the edges, the edge moldings here. Work that.
steel wool right in there. Make sure we get the last of that residual finish off. All I'm going to do is mix up some oxalic acid to treat these water stains. And I've taken this uh, Pyrex mixing cup into the house and boiled some water in it. And now I'm just going to mix up as much oxalic powder as this will take. And I think we're getting close. And with some powder on the bottom of the uh, cup, we know that our solution is saturated. So let's get to putting it on. And you've seen me use this before. You have to do the whole piece or the whole top. You can't just spot do them. Uh, you can sand before you put this in with like 120 to open the grain. But I'll be honest with you, I'm just not sure how much veneer I have here. And I think I'm going to be fine not sanding this uh, that one time. That'll save me one more sanding if I need it down the road. And oxalic treatments is, is one of those things, like I've said before, that sometimes it works miracles and sometimes it doesn't work very well at all. We'll see what happens here. We've got some dark circles from the water stains that I think the oxalic will take away and some lighter circles that may just be the color washed out over the years from the water. I'm just not sure we'll know much better when the uh, oxalic dries and we rinse it off and it dries out again. Okay, she's all dried off. I set her out in the sun. Let's uh, Rinse it off and see what, how it came out. Still have a ghost of one right there. Let me get this rinsed off and then we'll put it back out in the sun and dry off and see how it came out. And we brought it back on inside where it had been drying and you can see we've got most of those rings that have either disappeared or lightened. We'll see how they uh, respond when we go to put color back on it. I also took some time with a uh, container of water and a toothbrush to make sure that I brushed any oxalic that had dried in these little crevices and brushed it out. I think I had mentioned the a little bit earlier that some of the veneer had come loose and one of the ways of testing for loose veneer and this is a a technique I picked up from Thomas Johnson over at Thomas Johnson Antique Restoration and if you are not watching him you should be he is a true master but anyway he, it's, he calls it percussing and if you tap your finger you hear that solid thud let's get over here where the veneer is loose here it has that high pitched, almost like a snare drum. Thud, a higher pitched ring. And the veneer from here all the way to here is loose, probably almost to this line. That's not unusual when you're working with furniture this age. When you start to work with it, start stripping it, start rinsing it, that veneer will come loose. This is the time to fix it. Sometimes it comes loose during the refinishing process and that is a royal pain in the seat to deal with. So let me get, uh, get some stuff and we will deal with this veneer that's coming up. Okay, here we go. This is, this is not some special tool from uh, Rockler. This is just a scraper that I had that broke and I ground it down so I use it as a tool to do things like this. And pretty much what I'm doing here is just probing to find out where we're about here where this veneer is loose and then I'm running this in through here to pull out whatever I can get out. And next I'm going to use it or try to use it to get the glue in here. 
and there we go. And what I'm going to do is just try to get as much glue in here and as much of the surface covered with glue that I can without causing any damage to uh, the existing. These routed edges here where I'm tracing with the screwdriver make this very thin. It would be very easy to split it right there. Okay, I'm comfortable that we got plenty of glue on this. Let's get, let's get it clamped up. And I'm just trying to get as much of this glue out of this I don't know if it's a rope molding or what you call it. I know the square ones are called dental moldings, but I just want to try to avoid having to pick dried glue out of these details after this sets up. Wax paper. It's a great way to keep glue from getting on your calls. This is just a scrap board I have laying around. That should take care of it. Well, I think that about takes care of it for the first day. We're kind of on hold till the glue dries. Had we not had the repairs, we'd have had this done already. It really wasn't a lot of work. Maybe an hour, two hours. If I wasn't shooting a video, it'd be less than that. And a lot of time back and forth to the house, have a cup of tea, or wait for the, you know, wait for the oxalic to dry. But that's part of the game. So. Tomorrow we'll come in, we'll get the clamps off the tabletop, we'll get some color on it, work on uh, finishing that, then we'll clean and uh, do color touch-ups on the base, and then decide if we're going to spray a top coat on that or just leave it the way it is. But, eh, I think it went okay. Um, so far so good is what it is. We'll see you back in the shop tomorrow morning. Thanks. Good morning, it's the next day. Let's see if we can get this project finished up. Let's take off these clamps and see how we did. Looks good. Let's take off these clamps and see how we did.
Great shape. Let's move forward. Yeah, I got some 220 on a block here. We just like sand this with the grain in anticipation of starting to work on top coat and color. We've got it all sanded off now and it uh, looks like most of those rings have, have gone. We'll see what happens when we add color. I've decided to apply a wiping stain. I want some pigments in this finish. I'm going to use a medium brown walnut. I think it'll be fine. Let's give it a shot. I think that's going to look great. All right, let me get the rest of it on. I think that'll do just fine. Let's move on to the base. All right, I've taken a bucket of, uh, of warm water with a little dish soap in it and, and washed this down, and it's in pretty good shape. I'm not going to do much more to it. We've got some places down on the feet better missing some color so I'm just going to do some color touch-ups to the lower part of this base and then wax it and we'll be all done so let's flip this over and do some color work if you've been watching the channel for any length of time you've seen me use this pigment this is by Mohawk they call it blend all powder stain the color is raw umber and then I just go to the Home Depot or wherever and pick up a can of lacquer in this case it's clear satin I tend to use satin the most on furniture I think the gloss sometimes is just too shiny. All right, and here's the toe of one of the one of the legs, and uh, you can take if you if you have it if it's rough, you just take a piece of sandpaper and smooth it out to whatever your heart desires. And then this is a kind of a quick and easy way. Obviously, you could seal this and then mix this color up and apply it more carefully but this is this way has worked very well for me and it's it's fast I just apply the pigment I missed some lacquer over it and that's all there is to it it's pretty easy all right let me get the rest of this done and for what we are trying to accomplish for this project which is a resale piece I think that looks pretty good. Total invested time, including washing it, maybe 10 minutes. Hey, before I forget, I wanted to uh, talk to you about a mistake I made uh, early on in this project. If you recall, we had that lag screw that went up underneath. It actually mounted this part of the base to this leg assembly, and it was stripped out. We drilled it out the length of the screw, and then ran a dowel in there, and then we we're going to drill a hole through there and reinstall it. Well, the mistake was not one of construction because it's, it's absolutely together right now. The mistake is it's not going to come back apart because I dowel the two pieces together. What I should have done is just dowel the lower part and then run that screw up through there uh, as long as it would bite in the end. If it didn't, I'd have to take this apart, put a second dowel in so you had that separation so they could come apart. So if this ever has to come apart, you know, obviously these, these four cornices have to come off and then whoever tries to take this apart is going to have to drill that dowel out. Now, I don't see this ever coming apart. I doubt it's ever come apart since the day it was made. But I just wanted to make sure you understood that I made a mistake and I wanted to make sure that you were clear on if you choose to use that repair, you've got to separate that dowel between the two ends if you want those, the two pieces, if you ever want those pieces to come apart easily. And if you're a member, that's what we're talking about here. So be it. All right, and the next step is to spray some lacquer sealer on the top. Let's get that done now.
Okay, the sealer's dry. It's been sanded down nice and smooth. I want to apply a little glaze to this piece, both to add some pigment and a little bit more of the green that you see in raw umber, or in burnt umber, correction, raw umber, which this piece is, is lacking right now. And it will uh, help it blend in a little bit better with the the base. And I just apply this with a foam brush. This uh, this batch of glaze is getting a little bit old, and it's starting to clot up on me. So I've got to make sure that I get all these little pieces of uh, dried glaze off of here. Where I'm going to have a problem when I top coat it, but it's not the end of the world. And after I apply it, I just dry brush it out so it looks the way I want it to. And this is also grabbing all those little pieces and getting them off of here. Depression era furniture is often finished in what some people call molasses finish, which is a heavily pigmented lacquer it's it's just short of a paint really and uh, I, I very seldom exactly duplicate that but like in this piece here I, I want to cloud up the clear finish by getting some pigment into the mix and that's the purpose of the glaze it's also the reason I stained it with an oil based stain rather than going with toners and dyes and things like that. Okay, we have a a richer, a little bit more pigmented finish now that I think is going to look better when it's put back on the base. So we're going to let this dry for an hour or two, come back and we'll start, start to put top coats. But there we go. I think it looks okay. Let's let this dry. Okay, the glaze is dried. Let's shoot a top coat on this. And here's a tabletop so far. I think it looks really good. I'll be shooting a couple more coats of lacquer on this. And then we'll let it uh, lacquer get good and hard. I'll flip it over, put the base back on it, and I will bring you back for the final shots. Well, here she is all finished up. I think she looks great. Let's come inside and take a closer look at her. Well, there's how the top came out. If you remember, it was all full of water rings. Show you a picture of that now. And then the base came out really nice. All the color work is done. Of course, the construction issues were all taken care of. Repairs were done as well. I think she's ready for another hundred years of being either an occasional or a library table. Hopefully someone will find her and want her. Well, that'll do it for this one. If you've got an old Depression Era occasional or library table hanging around your basement, you're not sure what to do with it, I hope this video may have given you some ideas. Well, anyways, from our shop just outside Kennesaw here in North Georgia. Best regards, thanks for watching. Take good care and remember, it's just wood color and some shiny stuff. And we'll see you next video. Bye.